It is the year 1943, in a small house only several blocks west of New York's Harlem. A group of statisticians is solving a problem, the problem that challenges the logic of our thinking so far. A statistical research group with the official name of SRG, under the leadership of the genius mathematician Abraham Walt, is facing a major problem. The problem is keeping Allied bombers in the air as long as possible. After a close inspection of newly written bombers, aircraft engineers found out that reinforced armor was necessary. As you can probably guess, added armor increases weight, which results in higher fuel consumption and smaller flying range. The statistician team had to answer an important question. In which part of the bomber should the protective armor be installed? The flight engineers proposed adding armor to areas with the most visible signs of damage. That is, to the wings around machine guns and to the lower part of the fuselage. In their view, these were the most vulnerable areas. However, Abraham Wald had a different opinion. The damaged areas didn't indicate the weak spots, but the most resistant parts of the bomber. Wald pointed out the tangible evidence is not always the key to the solution, but rather than the key rested in the invisible. We should be inspecting the bombers that didn't return. There is always the possibility that the other part of the picture may look like this. People have a tendency to overlook the bigger picture. Our attention is naturally drawn to that which is right in front of us, not to the abstract. The survivorship bias stalks us every step of the way, and more so than we would want to admit. We sit everywhere in real life. Let's say you want to open a bar, because you have seen the success of other such bars in the area. However, before you do so, you cannot ignore the reality that your perception has been based on an incomplete picture. You must understand that you are only seeing surviving bars. You have left out all the bars that were unsuccessful. Instagram posts are another example. How many times have you felt depressed, useless or anxious after you opened your Instagram? Have you noticed that there are tons of pictures of your friends on vacation, enjoying themselves and rarely any that illustrate ordinary life? People post the best of their lives on their profiles, because that is how they get likes. If you find yourself depressed over other people's joyous lives, you are like the aircraft engineer who is missing one spot. You have to understand that on Instagram you are watching just a trailer of the movie which is full of the most exciting and amazing moments, but you will never watch the movie at all its length. In everyday life we are faced with risks. We are forced to make decisions under conditions of uncertainty. But why do we make so many mistakes when we should use our probabilistic thinking? If we have to make a decision in a situation where risk and uncertainty are present, we often use our own intuition. And this could be a problem. In many cases, our brains don't respect the laws of probability, even for simple tasks. Therefore, most of us are capable of spending thousands some may be tens of thousands on various scratch tickets, lotteries and spending hours in casinos. If we used our probability thinking, we could see that it's about a 27 times higher chance of being hit by a car in a year than winning a lottery. So next time when you are excitedly running to buy a lottery ticket, please just look around at the pedestrian crossing properly. A Stanford professor of probability, Percy Diakounis, put it exactly. Our brains are simply not wired to do probabilistic problems very well. For example, the so-called paradox of two daughters. This paradox shows us how counterintuitive probabilistic reasoning can be. We know that our friend has two children. We just can't remember if they are boys or girls. What is the probability that both of his children are girls? We will assume that the probability of having a boy and a girl is the same, 50%. So let us imagine all possible combinations. Son-son, son-daughter, daughter-son and daughter-daughter. Given that all these combinations 
have the same probability? The answer to our question so far is quite intuitive, 25%. But now we remember that at least one of his children is definitely a girl. How does this fact change the answer? What is now the probability that our friend has two daughters? Again, we look at the possible outcomes. This new information that at least one of the children is a girl has narrowed down the set of possible events and the Sun-Sun combination has dropped out. That leaves us with daughter-son, son-daughter and daughter-daughter. The result is therefore 33%. And now comes, perhaps, the greatest threat for our common sense. Imagine that not only have you remembered that at least one of his children is a daughter, but you have even remembered her name. Let's say her name is Julia. Can the mere fact that you remembered his daughter's name change the probability? Strange as it may seem to most of us, it really does. In probabilistic terms, remembering her name is like winning the jackpot. The fact that we know the name of one of his children in turn adjusts our possible outcomes. We already crossed out the Sun-Sun combination last time. So we are left with San Julia, Julia son, Julia daughter, daughter Julia. And the Julia-Julia combination can be crossed out due to the legislation which doesn't allow naming two children of the same parents with the same name. The resulting probability after we remembered her name is thus no longer 33%, but 50%. Perhaps the most famous example of how our brains are fooled when it comes to probabilities is the so-called Monte Hall paradox. Monte Hall was the host of the famous American TV show called Let's Make a Deal, which ran for 20 long years on NBC. This popular show had more than 4,500 episodes in total. Part of the competition show was that you as a contestant had to choose one of three closed doors. Behind one of them was a Cadillac. That was exactly what you wanted to win. Behind the other two, there was nothing. You picked one of the three closed doors in the first round. Then Monte Hall came in and opened one of the other two doors and showed that there was no Cadillac behind it. But then he asked you if you wanted to stick with your original choice or if you want to change it. For years, almost everyone assumed it didn't matter. Because now I had a choice of two closed doors, so the odds must be 50-50. Anyway, in September 1991, in the Sunday edition of Parade magazine, there was an article by Marilyn Savant. Marilyn Savant was a very intelligent journalist who for a long time was listed in the Guinness World Record book as the woman with the highest measured IQ of 230. In her column, Ask Marilyn, she commented on all sorts of social issues and it was this September article that helped to immortalize both Marilyn and the Let's Make a Deal show itself. This was due to the flood of protests Marilyn received from her readers. The answer seemed pretty clear to everyone. There are two closed doors left, so the odds are 50-50. What could be easier? Only Marilyn wrote that it was better to change your original choice. The fact that she dared to deny something so obvious provoked a flood of reactions and several thousand letters, even from mathematics professors at prestigious American universities. Several hundred doctors of science wrote to her, saying that her opinion was completely wrong. But Marilyn Savan was right. How can something that looks so clear actually be otherwise? We'll only need a precise logical thinking to understand the correct solution of the Monte Hall paradox. Let's try to explain this problem without using any formulas. If you had to pick one door in the first round, there is indeed a 1 in 3 chance of picking a door with a Cadillac, a probability of one third. However, there was a second phase in the TV show. That was when the host, who knows what is behind each door, opened a door with nothing behind it. 
he could never open the winning door for you because the game would be meaningless. So the host used his knowledge to avoid revealing the Cadillac. Let's consider three situations. The first is that you actually choose the winning door at the beginning. The host then opened one of the remaining empty doors. And you at this point, changing your original choice would be really bad for you. You would have changed the original correct choice. But then we have two more situations. You choose the wrong door at the beginning. Monte Hall can't open the winning door, so he slept with the one door with nothing behind it. So at this point, the change of your choice is successful for you. And you change your choice to the door behind which there really is a Cadillac. And the third situation is exactly the same, where you have chosen the empty door again at the beginning. And at this point, the resulting odds are not 50-50, but 2 in 3 and are indicative of changing your original choice. And even the statistics of the winners of this TV show perfectly support that conclusion. The theory of probability as a part of mathematics deals with the study of chance, risk and uncertainty. Actually, it is chance that influences our lives far more than we are able to admit. On the one hand, we love the unpredictability of a TV detective story or unpredictability of a budding relationship. On the other hand, we hate the dark side of randomness. Diseases like SARS, cancer or COVID attacks us without any previously known plan. Terrorists destroy enclaves, planes crash, cars break down and we can never be sure we are not next. If you've seen Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you're probably more likely to remember the quirky mysterious and boister stuntman Brad Pitt than admittedly richer but predictable Leonardo DiCaprio. When it comes to randomness, we can run, we can try to escape, but we can't hide from it. Randomness is neither good nor bad. It is simply confusing to us. The study of chance and probability usually doesn't help us to predict exactly what will or will not happen, but it will help us understand its laws and correctly make the decisions we have to make. Thank you for your attention.